स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया in this part uh, let us talk about something um, a little different from uniqueness so uh, essentially this is a uniqueness but uh, this is called a backward uniqueness okay so um, backward uniqueness now you see in laplacian what happens is you just have a omega and in that uh, domain you are just working out you know if the solution is unique or not but here there is a time variable which is involved right so a natural question is this see initially in uniqueness what we did is we just uh, um, assume that u is g on some you know parabolic boundary and it satisfies the in homogeneous equation you have to show that the solution is unique or not and we have seen that the solution is unique but if the question is something like this let's say if the question is um, so um, let's say u let u and u delta okay this this satisfies this satisfies ut minus laplacian of u equals to 0 in omega t and u equals to g on the uh, you know only the del omega cross 0 t so del omega cross 0 t okay so only the sides if you if you will so let's say that's your domain okay let's say this is our domain boundary of omega is this right del omega so let's say that's your omega yeah and this cross 0 t so only this part okay so only the top part this this part only this part nothing inside not inside nothing inside only this this uh, uh, part that part this part and this part right so uh, um, a point here does it belongs to that set no so the boundary we are only looking at the parabolic boundary minus the base this base okay of course the boundary is included okay the boundary of omega cross t equals to zero is included so that is there okay so let's say u satisfies this equation and and u tilde uh, also satisfies this equation so u t tilde minus laplacian of u this is 0 in omega t okay and u tilde okay is g on the boundary cross 0 t sorry uh, yeah, yeah okay so this is for some for some g continuous continuous clear now one small remark here remark so I, what am i starting out with i'm starting out with two functions u and u tilde such that u satisfies this equation and u tilde satisfies this equation so essentially they satisfy both the same equation yeah but you note that uh, we are not we are not assuming u and u tilde okay are equal equal at time t equals to 0 okay so we are not assuming they are equal you see it may be different right at this point we don't know we just know that on the boundary u is g and u tilde is g that's all yeah on the boundary they are equal yeah, of course on the on this boundary not at this point sir. so t equals to 0 it may or may not be equal so we are not assuming they are equal okay now what is the uh, what is backward uniqueness says the uh, theorem says theorem okay let u and u tilde is in c21 omega t okay uh, bar of course bar oh, so we are always taking the boundary and uh, so solves 1 and 2 what are what is 1 this is 1 and that's your 2 okay so let's say this solves 1 and 2 yeah and if if this is very important u at x t equals to u tilde at x and capital t okay and x is in omega x is in omega so what does it say it says that u and u tilde they are same for let's say this is some t okay i mean see here i am just putting this t here there is nothing special about this t 
okay it can be here also it can be here also so let's say uh, t for now let's just assume that this is t i mean the cylinder may go on yeah it's not like specified up till here only it can be so omega t can be here also so let's say t1 so i can do it for omega t1 also okay so if that happens then then so essentially if for any time t yeah for let's say t equals to t1 or t equals to t small t equals to capital t or small t equals to capital t1 whatever it is yeah if that is happening if u is same for all x capital t and u and u tilde are same is essentially at that those points okay then what happens is you can say u is uh, equivalent to u tilde in omega capital t okay so what this is saying is let's let's put it another small remark it is saying that if the two distributions okay on omega if the two distributions means functions maybe okay functions u u and u tilde okay let's say they uh, of course in omega in omega agrees okay at some time t at some time t okay of course this is positive so let's say t1 positive then and of course the boundary values uh, so you see the boundary values has to be same okay and, uh, and then uh, that the they are equal provided they share mm, a common boundary a common boundary mm, values okay values for all for all time 0 t t1 okay so essentially i am taking t1 here you can just say t1 to be capital t that's not a point that's not a problem okay so here what it is saying is if it is same at one some point you see this is important at some point okay if it is same at some point then it is saying that they are equal of course the boundary condition has to be equal for all t and then so this is uh, this is uh, a capital okay Let, let's put it uh, like this is let's, t less than t1 clear yeah. so uh, if this is uh, holding oh, sorry if this is uh, if this hold for all t between 0 and t1 then the functions are identically equal so you have to have the function equal at for some t okay for some t and then and on the boundary it has to be equal for all those t for all t below this capital t1 then the functions are same okay so let's look at the proof of this thing proof so what is the proof of this thing first thing first of course we are starting out with let uh, i mean you know you all usual things uh, so we define define w which is u minus u delta okay and of course this is in omega t and once you define this thing then uh, you uh, and set i mean this is our usual thing yeah? whatever we did earlier omega square x t dx okay so essentially i am taking the uh, i am fixing a t and for each fixed t i am defining a et such that this is uh, the square of or w and this is holds for all t between 0 and capital t yeah okay if that happens then uh, i mean of course you can um, you see w is u minus u delta u minus u delta is twice continuously differentiable right uh, with respect to x and once continuously differentiable with respect to t so essentially this is thrice differentiable the in this function e of t so i can take at least one different derivative here if i take one derivative here that will give you uh, two integral over omega mm, uh, if you remember this is omega of x t omega uh, t of x t right why can i write it like this because you see i can take the derivative of with respect to t inside because this is the integral with respect to x now if i just replace you see wt satisfies what wt satisfies mm, uh, zero i mean wt equals to laplacian w in omega right so essentially this is equals to integ two integral over omega mm, w of xt and laplacian of w xt 
dt right that's what you are going to get and uh, after that integration by parts since wt equals to laplacian of w right and see after you do a integration by parts that will give you minus 2 times integral over omega gradient of w square dx i hope this is um, fine i mean we did this earlier also okay All right uh, of course this prime i mean the prime is d d t with respect to time fine now uh, what we are going to do is we are going to um, take the another derivative as i told you e t is thrice differentiable so i can talk about the e double prime of t what is e double prime of t if you um, can just uh, i mean there is nothing to do here so let me just write it down it is gradient of w gradient of w t uh, d of x right why because you see uh, see essentially you have um, gradient of w dot gradient of w right i mean if you take the derivative of this thing so it is basically gradient of w gradient of w t plus gradient of w t gradient of w okay and then you will get this thing see here this gradient is with respect to x okay that is why with respect to t this is coming going inside okay so uh, you have this and again gradient of w t is laplacian of w so this will give you 4 integral over omega uh, laplacian of w um, where is it yeah uh, one sec laplacian ah okay sorry uh, W t right W t we can't change we know what Laplacian of W is uh, or do we what do you, what do we know we know that uh, oh okay uh, so no I won't change it here I will do an integration by parts here okay I will do an integration by parts and I will put push this in derivative here so uh, it, it is integral over W it will become uh, I mean Laplacian of W dot W t okay d of x is this clear and what about the boundary condition see w is 0 on the boundary okay on del omega so that's not clear clear uh, because u uh, is u delta on del omega right so this is uh, true okay so now what we want to do is this see laplacian of w, w t is laplacian of w so this essentially says this is 4 integral laplacian of w square d of x right this is what we are going to get e double prime of t now uh, therefore what do we get see therefore integral over omega gradient of w square d of x yes this um, is equals to let's say integral this is what we got last time huh? it is w laplacian of w d of x right gradient of w square if we just write it from integration by parts integration by parts we are going to get this because w is zero on the boundary right so we are going to get this now once you get this you can take the so the mod of this thing the absolute value of this thing is less than i'm not writing all that huh? is less than equals to integral over omega w square whole power half and integral over omega uh, laplacian of w square dx let's, let's write dx whole power half yes this is true see minus of this thing if you take the modulus of this that will be less than equal integral over omega mod of this thing and then you use cauchy schwarz inequality to get what you just wrote this is um, cauchy schwarz cauchy schwarz clear is cauchy schwarz inequality now once we do this thing then what do you have then then e prime of t let's take the square of this thing okay e prime of t square that is what it is 4 integral over omega gradient of w square dx whole power whole square clear okay and that is equals to less than equals to integral over omega w square dx and integral over omega 4 i will write it like this laplacian of w square dx clear and this is what this is e of t e double prime of t i hope this is clear to you c gradient of w square dx is this right so i just wrote it here and after that put the four inside if i am putting the four inside that is what this is essentially e double prime of t so that is e double prime of t so uh, maybe i can write it like this huh? uh, it will be more clear let me put it this way so e double prime of t clear okay so what do we have we have that uh, therefore uh, we have that e double prime of t 
times e e of t this is greater than equal e prime of t square okay for all zero less than t less than capital t now this inequality if you if you look at properly see this is minus e prime t square uh, is greater than zero right and that will give you some i mean you know something like e e of t by e prime of t the derivative sorry e prime of t by e t the derivative of that right something like that i mean if you just write it together huh? this is an ode so essentially this gives us an idea what what is that idea so let me write it so basically there is some log involved here yeah if i involve a log here i will tell you what uh, all of this means so for the next step what we do is now see if e of t I want to show uniqueness, right? So if e of t is identically equals to zero for all t between zero and capital T, then we are done. Then we are done, right? Why we are done? Because e of t is integral of w square. If e of t is identically equals to zero, the so integral of w square is zero. That will give you w is zero, and that will give you e equals to u tilde. So we are done. Otherwise, otherwise, okay. Uh, let's say there exists, there exists an interval t1 and t2. T1 and T2, which is containing, of course, zero capital T, such that, okay, e of t is greater than zero, okay, for T1 less than t less than T2, and e of t2 is zero. This is always true. Yes, if if it is not zero, if it is positive somewhere, then this kind of thing. Um, is bound to happen why there is always a t2 such that e of t2 is zero because e of t is always e of capital t if you just look at what is e of capital t okay uh, um, so you see e of see this is for any t2 between zero and t and what is e of capital t e of capital t is going to be zero right e of capital t is zero so essentially what is happening is there is always such a t for which this all of this ha happens okay so now what you do is now okay we write g of t you define g of t to be log of et okay and once you define it you can actually show that g prime of t this you i want you guys to do yourself this is very easy this is always greater than equal to how let's say that is star from star i hope this is quite fine see what is g prime t it is oh, e prime of t by et right and after the g prime t is essentially g double prime t is essentially this thing huh? and this is greater than equal to 0 so g double prime t is greater than equal to 0 okay so what does that give you therefore therefore that says that g is convex in t1 t2 right it says that it is convex in sorry it is open t1 t2 huh? It has to be open t1 t2 it is in open t1 and t2 okay that is what it is saying so now once it is convex in open t1 t2 what we can do is we can just write it like you see for 0 less than tau less than 1 okay and uh, t1 less than t less than t2 we have we have g of 1 minus tau t1 plus tau t okay this is less than equal 1 minus tau f of t1 plus tau f of t right i can write it like this so for any t between t1 and t2 i can just write it and write the expression like this okay and see if what is g g is log of exponential t so if i just put it together what will what is going to happen uh, log of sorry, not, not exponential sorry, sorry. Uh, g of t is log of et right see g of t is log of et right if you put it together what is going to happen this this will just be exponential e, uh, sorry e uh, sorry it's not exponential here yeah? it is 1 minus tau times t1 plus tau t this is less than equals to log is there so this will go inside e of t1 1 minus tau e of t to the power tau okay this is for 0 tau 1 clear and 
if this is happening by continuity what can you say by continuity once you use continuity and take t uh, towards t2 minus okay by continuity when t goes to t2 minus what happens this will converge to see e is a continuous function okay so this will convert so e power tau is also continuous for tau between 0 and 1 and hence uh, this will converge to e power t2 yeah this holds for all t between so this will converge to e power t2 so uh, again exponent e sorry e power, the function e is always positive function right this is always positive function because e of t yeah for all t so uh, this is positive right so essentially what is happening is 0 less than equal so uh, non negative sorry exponential is always uh, sorry, sorry not exponential what am i saying e of t c e of t is integral of w square right so it is a integral of a square function so it is never negative so it is always non negative right so this is 0 less than equals to exponential 1 minus tau t1 plus tau t less than equal exponential t2 1 minus t1 1 minus tau exponential t to the power tau now when this thing goes t goes to t2 this will go to exponential t2 to the power tau okay exponential t1 1 minus tau this is less than equals to this less than equals to 0 okay so what does that mean it means that um, therefore it means that exponential t is 0 because exponential sorry sorry no what am i saying why am i saying exponential this is e yeah i'm really sorry about this here yeah? so this is e yes not exponential so e power t this is 0 for t1 t t2 yeah this is 0 see this is given to be 0 this is what our assumption was this is 0 and uh, so whatever is inside you know e for all this t which is which looks like this so the the line segment containing t and t1 uh, t1 and t2 for all those t e of t is 0 because this is 0 this is 0 so this is sandwiched between 0 so this e power this power e uh, of this all these points are 0 so that is going to be 0 this is a contradiction that's a, that's a contradiction to the fact that uh, uh, e power t is positive that is what we assumed okay and hence and hence it is proved that uh, therefore e power t has to be uh, you know uh, identically equals to 0 that is u should always be u delta clear within omega t okay one small thing i want to again explain i'm really very sorry uh, these are not exponentials yeah i don't know why I, I am just calling it exponential because you know whenever we see e we just write it as exponential but this is not an exponential this is a function e okay this is a function e so i'm really sorry about that okay so with this we are going to end this particular topic and next uh, topic we are going to start up with fundamental solution